Today we're talking about the hymn, Oh What Their Joy. It's number 675 in the Lutheran Service Book, and it is the hymn of the day for this Sunday at Grace. This hymn is about a thousand years old. I am so blessed to go to a church that doesn't only use music that was produced in recent history, like our hymn, Seek Ye First, that we did last week. That's a 50-year-old hymn. Here we have a 1,000-year-old hymn. Our hymns come from all over the timeline in the Lutheran Church. And if you know what? If your hymn reflects eternal truths, then it is eternally relevant, regardless of when it was written. And speaking of hymns that reflect eternal truths, this hymn is about eternity. And it is about the joy and the glory that we will know when we get there. The hymn is found in the, the church triumphant section of the hymnal that's always found at the top of the page. And it's found alongside such hymns as Jerusalem the Golden, Jerusalem My Happy Home, and For All the Saints. If that doesn't give you enough of a hint, I'll tell you right now, this hymn is about heaven. Oh, what their joy and their glory must be, says our hymn, those endless Sabbaths the blessed ones see. These words are a 19th century translation by John Mason Neal of a 12th century text by Peter Abelard. Our translator, John Mason Neal, was an English clergyman, writer, translator. More than 20 of his translations appear in the Lutheran service book. So while not a Lutheran, does have an impact on this hymnody. And our original author, Peter Abelard, he was a 12th century religious figure, but he lived a life that I am not joking could have come straight out of a 21st century soap opera. You cannot make this stuff up. So here is the story of Peter Abelard and along the way, the story of our hymn for today. Peter Abelard was born in Brittany, France at the end of the 11th century, and he was brought up by his father who was a knight. He was brought up with the intention of serving in the military, but he ended up in philosophy and theology, which was not approved by his family, and he ended up being disinherited because of his choice. Abelard was a monk by the time he wrote our hymn, but prior to entering monastic life, philosophy was his love. He was a teacher of philosophy, made a career out of that. While teaching at the Cathedral School of Notre Dame around the year 1115, Abelard began an affair with a young lady named Heloise. Heloise was his student, and she was also the niece and the ward of Fulbert, who was the canon of Notre Dame. Abelard fathered a child with Heloise, and the two were married, but they were married in secret to protect Abelard's professional reputation. And Heloise's uncle found out about all this stuff, and he was absolutely furious. And fearing his wrath, Abelard took Heloise, and he sent her to live in a convent to protect her. Unfortunately for Abelard, Fulbert did not see it this way. He was aggrieved by all of the things that he had seen Abelard already doing, and now he thought that Abelard was sending Heloise away not to protect her, but to get rid of her, to like put her out of his life. And so Fulbert sent to Abelard's house in the middle of the night a band of men who castrated Abelard. And it was after this event that Abelard finally decided to enter monastic life. Heloise also probably, or perhaps a little bit begrudgingly, entered monastic life. She became a nun, and Abelard and Heloise would stay in touch over the years, even producing together in the 1130s a collection of their love letters and religious correspondence. And now, after their deaths, they are buried together at Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. Now, as a monk, Abelard held a number of posts in various monasteries, but notable to our investigations of this hymn today, Abelard was the founder of the Oratory of the Paraclete, which was a Benedictine monastery in France. While he was there, he made a three-volume hymnal for the monastery, and it is from that hymnal that our hymn comes today. The hymn was in that book, at, or in that collection of books, rather, as an office hymn for Saturday Vespers, which is the evening prayer office. Dr. Thomas von Hegel, in the Lutheran Service Book Companion to the Hymns, writes that Abelard located this hymn in the evening of the world with an eye to the approaching heavenly morn. Four of the original seven verses are found in our hymnal, and they look ahead to what life eternal will be for those who die in faith. Crowns for the valiant, to weary ones rest, says verse 1. Joy and peace forever abound, and all things prayed for are received, says verse 2. And in verse 3, no trouble, no distraction, just praise. 
the whole thing ends with a verse of praise to the God who will bring us to that blessed day. And that verse has a little delta, that little triangle at the beginning of it to signify for us that we are going to stand and sing that final verse in reverence for the triune God. Now the tune that you heard on the way into this video and which you'll hear again on the way out is not the original tune to the text, but it has been associated with the text from the 17th century in France, which is also the place of origin for the text. The name of the tune is the first line of the text in Latin, O Quanta Qualia, and the tune is also reused in the LSB for hymn 520, Stars of the Morning So Gloriously Bright, which is a hymn for the feast day of St. Michael and all angels. So there you have it. A little bit of scandal in our story for the hymn of the day this week. Abelard and Heloise were both very intelligent and well-respected members of the religious community. Abelard has a number of other books that you can find if you search online, other philosophical works and religious works. He also has a book about his calamitous life, which is kind of interesting. You might want to look it up. And Heloise as well was well-respected. She served actually as the abbess of that monastery, the Oracle of the Oratory, sorry, the Oratory of the Paraclete after Abelard left uh, to serve at another post. So I encourage you to actually look them both up and do a little bit of your own research if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Bye.